Mississippi on a big airplane Down to Alabama on an Amtrak train I cruise Beale Street in a limousine You know I went to Mardi Gras down in New Orleans And everywhere I went, every time I sent you found me there This is Ginger, my 1981 Gibson Explorer that I bought in 1981 after uh, hocking my granny's TV with her permission and borrowing $15 from my girlfriend so that I could get it out of a layaway. I've had Ginger since 1981 and we've been a lot of places. I mean, this is my wear and tear. My, my Budweiser belt buckle did that right there when I was lost in a world of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I'd been kicked out of high school. I'd been arrested a half a dozen times. Uh, and my live-in girlfriend had the same issues going on. On November 23rd, 1982, all that changed. I gave my life to Jesus Christ, and I led my live-in girlfriend to Jesus Christ that night as well. And though we both had been in lots of trouble with the law, and we'd been in lots of trouble at school, God redeemed us and turned our lives around, and we became part of a life-giving church and, and took the gift of music into that church and began to use it there. And God began to transform us. We both went to college. Uh, we began to have babies. God let us raise a family. We've been in ministry for, I guess, over 20 years. And mostly in the role of a pastor uh, doing the work of an evangelist. But we're feeling more and more uh, that God wants to use Susan and I, along with Ginger, to build bridges wearing the actual mantle of an evangelist. And I, I believe the true sense of that word is to go to the highways and the byways and take the gospel to the unsaved, to reach out to the lost sheep, to uh, people that haven't lost their belief in God, but they're disconnected from God's church. They're disconnected from God's destiny for their life. And, and the lost coins, the Bible talks about. A coin doesn't even know it's lost. There's so many people in our society that have never had a revelation of Jesus Christ. Despite all the Christian television, despite all the churches on every corner, there's been no one that intersected their life and really helped them discover who Jesus is. We want to reach out to those people as well as remind the prodigals that are out there in the margins, in the, in the bars, in the streets, in places maybe they shouldn't be, and just remind them that God's not back home sitting on the porch with his arms crossed, tapping his foot, saying, I told you so, waiting for them to come back to say, I told you so, but rather he's waiting with a robe of righteousness to cover the dirt and everything the enemy has put on them and put a, a ring of royalty on their finger and bring them back into the family. And we believe music is going to play a big part of that, Ginger, and some of the songs that I've written uh, have opened many, many doors and helped us all through our ministry life, mostly as pastors. But again, now we really feel that God wants to send us to the highways and the byways to build bridges between the lost and the found. Romans 10, 14, and 15 says this, How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Let me bring it back to that line. How can anyone preach unless they are sent? We want to go eagerly, just like the Apostle Paul. He saw it as sin if he didn't preach the gospel. We want to go to the people that are in the margins, the lost sheep, the lost coins, and the prodigals. We want to bring the hope of Jesus to them, to intersect their lives in the place where they live. Let me bring it back to the very basic thing. We want to connect people to Jesus and and we want to connect people to life-giving churches. Those are the two decisions that change my life forever and my family and our legacy forever. Someone told me about Jesus and someone got me connected to a local church. I'm praying and believing God is going to open doors for us to go into prisons and jails and halfway houses and tell those people that think they're down and out that God is able to redeem what's left of their life and use them and, and they can still be connected to His plan for their life. We feel like God has called us to play really close to the edge because that's where we came from. Uh, that's why we call our ministry Life on the Verge. Uh, the book of Jude tells us to snatch others from the fire, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. In other words, we're to get so close to the fire that our clothes smell like smoke and we have to change them spiritually once in a while. It's a dangerous place and not everybody is called to go there, but we feel like God has called us to go there and to use three things, our testimony, the Word of God, and music. I like to think that uh, Moses had his rod, David had his slingshot, and God gave me ginger.